everyone, my name is Katie Comer and this is the presentation on Rudy Audio, one of our famous ceramicists. So a little bit about his early life. So Rudy was born in Butte, Montana in 1926. His parents were immigrants from Finland. Uh, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy in 1944 and attended the Aviation Machinist School. Then in 1960, he received his B.S. in Applied Arts from Montana State University. And in 1952, he received his Master of Fine Arts in Sculpture from Washington State University. And these works shown here and on all of the slides are part of his later works. A little bit more about that in a second, but uh, this is just for you to kind of get the vibe of like his later works and what he did. So as for his career, in 1951, he was a founding resident of the Archie Bray Ceramics Foundation in Helena, Montana, and this foundation is still there today. It's a public nonprofit educational institution dedicated to teaching ceramics, especially to the youth. Um, so from 1952 to 1957, he worked as a resident artist at the Archie Bray Ceramics Foundation. Then from 1957 to 1985, so 28 years, he founded the ceramics department at University of Montana and worked as a professor there. As for awards and accolades, I'm not going to read all of those out loud. This is just to emphasize the fact that he was a really significant ceramicist. I think the only important one that I should mention is in 1980, he did receive the National Endowment Grant, which allowed him to work and lecture in the Arabia Por Porcelain Factory in Applied Arts University in Helsinki, Finland. So he received a grant, went to Finland for a couple years um, and started teaching there and was eventually elected to be an honorary member of their designers organization while he was there, which was a pretty big deal. Um, another significant award, the American Craftsman's Gold Medal. That's a pretty big deal. Um, honorary Doctorate of Art. Whole bunch of cool awards there. He was he was pretty big at the time. Now we get to his works. So his style in general. He often formed the shape of abstract human torsos. He obviously was a ceramicist, although he also worked. He did relief works. He did uh, tiles and fiber arts and paintings and drawings in his earlier years. Uh, but his main thing was being a part of the American abstract expressionist ceramic movement. He was mostly known for large irregularly shaped abstract ceramic vessels. Uh, they typically depicted human forms, sometimes horses, well actually a lot of horses. He also took a lot of inspiration from Greek mythology and was heavily influenced by Isama Noguchi, sorry if I mispronounced that, Henry Moore and Henry Matisse. And finally, all of his pieces were really colorfully glazed. You'll see this in a second. But uh, before he went to Finland, his pieces tended to be a lot more earth toned and brown. But when he went to Finland, he discovered like colored slip and a bunch new a bunch of new different colored glazes. And you see a lot of those pop up into his work more. So here's some images of his early works. As I said before, not very colorful, uh, pretty dull and earth toned and not super sculptural. Uh, he eventually gets more into artistic uh, way of doing things later on. But this is a lot of his works from the 1960s to 1970s. So about the time when he first started teaching at Montana University, I'd say uh, the most significant of these pieces was the sculpture in the top right corner. Um, and also, none of these are really named. All of these I pulled from the website his family founded for him. It's just rudyaudio.com. And um, they have like a list of all of his works, and none of them are really named. None of them are really specifically dated. Uh, but that's where I got all of these. Then finally, here's his later works. And again, all of the pictures that you've seen on the slides previously were also all of his later works. Like we said, there's a lot of ceramic vessels in the shape of human torsos, which is really crazy. Uh, the one in the top right corner is a plate, not a pot, uh, which wasn't very common for him. But all these pots, they depict women, they depict horses. They're all very colorfully painted and sculpted. Uh, lots of Greek mythology in Chin. Um, there's reminiscence of the painting Venus. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but still. And 
yeah, very large abstract pots. It was pretty recognizable. Finally, I just have a small, well, short video. It's eight minutes, so I'm not going to play the whole thing. A short video of Rudy Audio himself when he was still living. He did pass away in 2007, but this is just a video of him working on a piece of pottery. He's painting it in this video and just kind of talking. He made a lot of, he wrote down a lot of stories from his life and wrote down a lot of memoirs, and so... He has actually been published in multiple books and multiple documentaries, even posthumously, just because he wrote down a lot of things about his life. And um, he is survived by two daughters who have been working really hard to, like, put out a lot of information about his life and his work. So this is really cool. It's just a little tidbit. All right, that was just a little bit on his relief work as well. And that was Rudy Audio. Thank you for watching. And then finally, here are my sources.